nothing changes. Hi, it's Pastor Ann. Hi from Miss Jordan. Hey, it's Miss Anna. Hey friends, it's Miss Alyssa. Hi, it's Miss Jacqueline. Hi, it's Miss Wendy. Hey everyone, it's me, Miss Dina. I'm so glad you're here. Hey you guys, it's Miss Jordan. Welcome to RPC Kids Online. I'm actually at the park today. Did you have spring break this week? I bet you had the best time playing outside, seeing your friends, and doing some fun stuff to kick off spring and summer. Well, welcome back today. We're talking about patience today at church. This has been one of my favorite things to talk about out of this whole year because you know why? It's probably the number one thing that Miss Jordan has to work on. Patience is waiting for what you want right now until later. And that's hard to do. You know, like, for example, when you really, really want a chocolate chip cookie, and no matter what, no matter how hard you want it, you have to make the dough first, or somebody does, and then it has to go in the oven, and you have to bake it, and you have to wait. You have to be patient. Or maybe, oh, man, I bet this has happened to you. You're doing something on a computer and it's taking forever to load and it just seems so frustrating and all you want it to do is be ready right now, but it's not. You gotta practice patience in those moments too. So today we're gonna learn a story about a guy named Esau and he was not very patient and there was a consequence for that. So let's take a look at our Bible story and I'll see you back for worship. Ooh, a marshmallow. Sure. Eat the mallow, miss out on something better. What do you mean? If you wait and don't eat that mallow until I return, then you will receive something even better than a mere measly mallow. Better than a marshmallow? <laughs> Not one bite. Okay, come on. <laughs> okay, I don't think he can wait and resist eating that marshmallow, but if he can, I'm going to give him an entire bag of marshmallows. <laughs> All right, here we go, count to 10. <laughs> Where's the desk? Did you eat the desk? Um, uh, uh, you ate the desk! I didn't eat the marshmallow! Oh. All right. Oh. Everybody, I'm John and I'm Brandon and welcome to the so-and-so show you've been waiting a whole week to see this show Thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. I know you won't be disappointed <laughs> Did somebody say manners? Uh, no. no I am Melinda Manners and I can always tell when my help is needed I can sense when someone is being manly And when someone is not. Oh, oh yeah, all oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> the chair. We're not so, yeah. <laughs> my dear boys, what seems to be the problem today? Uh, no, no problem. We're just trying to get the show rolling. So. Patience, my dear boys, patience. It's one of the most important manners. I wrote an entire symphony on patience once. Oh, is that <laughs> right? Let, let's. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I feel like mm. I'm learning so much from that. Oh, that's just the tip of the ice cube. Oh, no, that's not the uh, way that... Uh, uh. 
If you want to be manly, don't speak out, just sit quietly. Don't correct or presume, just sit tight and listen to me. Now, I meant what I said about sitting tight. Shoulders back, boys. It is unmannerly to slouch. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Better? So, uh, Melinda, now that you're here, what do you like to do for fun? Oh, so many things. There's nothing unmannerly about having fun, after all. I keep my favorite things with me at all times. Let's see. Oh, yes, yes. Hold this, please. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Oh. A ball for baskets. A screen flat for movies. And this electronic sewing box. Wow, you certainly do know how to have fun. How did you pull all of this out of that bag? I may be delicate in my manners, but I am a strong woman. Manners and strength are like peas and carrots. They go together like deserts and ferrets. How do deserts and ferrets go together? Now, my most favorite fun to have is the kind that you can really learn from. <laughs> Ooh. Let's play a little game I like to call Bake and Wait. Our preparations are complete. Now we simply need to insert the pan into the oven. And in 27 short minutes, we can enjoy some delicious light bulb heated balls of cookie dough. 27 minutes? Hey, this may take a while. You may want to speed through. Let's eat! Actually, now the cookies have to sit in the cooling chamber for five minutes. Oh, no, thank you. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Wow! <laughs> it would be unmannerly for me to say I told you so. So I'll just sing it. Being patient is always right, but you didn't listen, for you're not so bright. It's Bible story time and Kellen. Hey guys. Hey Kellen. What's up today, Kellen? Well, today we're looking at something that happened in the very first book of the Bible. That's right. Genesis, specifically Genesis chapter 25. This is the story of two twin brothers, Jacob and Esau. It wasn't my fault. Jacob tricked me. Um, what's going on? You can't prove anything, Esau. Yes, I can. Tricky McTricker face. That's not my name. It should be. Okay, okay, slow down. I think we might need some kind of judge to handle this. You have just stepped into the courtroom of Judge Trudy. The cases are biblical. The people are historical. The courtroom is not real at all. This is Judge Trudy. Just to be clear, this courtroom did not appear in the Bible. Oh, I'll take it from here, Kellen. So, Esau says here in your case file that you were born first. So you got your family's rights and inheritance. Is that correct? That's correct. I was born first. This is my birthright. Mine. Hmm. Well, a birthright is a really big deal. It means you'll get more of your father's wealth and property, and that you'll become leader of the family. Yeah, that's right. But Jacob, you stole the birthright from your older brother, correct? No, I did not steal it. He sold it to me, fair and square. The, the trickster! 
At it again. You were the one who made the trade. Order. I need to know the real story. Bailiff, roll the security footage. Jacob, quick, I'm insanely hungry. Feed me some of that stew. Sure, but first you have to sell me your birthright. Look, I'm dying of hunger. What good are those rights to me now? Promise me. Promise me you'll sell me your rights. Fine, I can't wait any longer. I promise to give you my birthright. Wait, Esau! Did you not even value your birthright? I was hungry. Oh, but you didn't have one bit of patience. You could have waited and eaten something else later. Let me ask you something. Was the stew worth it? It was okay. Mm -hmm. Tasteless, but for a moment. But your birthright would have affected generations. It seems to me, Esau, that your complaint against your brother is your own fault. I cannot rule in your favor. You made your choice. Court is adjourned. This has been Judge Trudy. Even though there's no way that was the real Jacob and Esau, Judge Trudy summed it up well. Esau did not value his rights as the firstborn son. Being impatient made him sell something that was worth more than we can imagine for the price of one little bowl of stew. Bummer. Seriously. You know, being impatient can actually cost you. Totally. When we're not patient, we rush in without thinking about the consequences. Oh, I know. I bent my tongue. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. I think we can avoid a lot of problems if we just pause and think before we act. There's a lot we can miss out on when we're not willing to wait. It's good to hear. Thanks, Kellen. Yeah, thanks. You got it. I'll see you guys next time. I think I've ended that today. Put that away, please. Sorry. Reveal the question. What could you miss out on by not waiting? Yeah, like when you eat snacks before dinner and then you're not hungry and it turns out to be your favorite meal. Uh, that's a bummer. Yeah, or you can miss out on spending time with your friends who are running late because you didn't want to wait for them. Or maybe something even more drastic like an ESOS case. Mm -hmm. Talk about it together and we'll see you next time. I'm John. And I'm Brandon and this was The, the So-and-So so Show. Pretty crazy, right? It's hard to believe that Esau traded away his rights as the oldest son all for a meal, a meal that was only gonna last a really short time. He gave up something that was forever, at least while we're here on Earth. That's a pretty impatient decision that he made. Let us learn from this, right? So that we can take moments when we want to be impatient and really think about what it's going to cost us because being impatient right now could really cost us later. Esau taught us that. Hey, I want to do some worship with you guys. We have a fun song to sing today, and then we're going to come back for our memory verse. So stand up, get your groove on, let me see you dance. Here we go. Sometimes it's hard to wait for all the things that I want. Sometimes I kind of feel like it's just taking too long.
that you're working it out I'm gonna hold up, slow down I'm gonna trust that you're working it out Worship is one of my favorite parts of service. I love that we can talk to God by praying, by spending time in His Word, by just having conversations just like you and I are talking right now. And we can talk to God by worshiping, by singing. And I love that way of talking to God. I have some exciting news. Next weekend, we have a baptism here on our campus. And this baptism is really special because it's the weekend before Easter. It's a Palm Sunday baptism. We're going to be learning all about Palm Sunday next week. But here's what I want you to know. Baptism is a step of obedience in our faith when we have decided to follow Jesus. So when you have made the decision to believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for your bad choices and my bad choices, something that we could not do on our own, so that we could spend forever in heaven with him. you believe that? You say it and you tell God that you believe that? The next step is to become baptized. When you believe that, you're a Christian, right? Baptism doesn't make us a Christian. Baptism doesn't want gets us to heaven. It's a step of obedience to show our family, our friends, our church, everyone around us to say, we believe that Jesus is our savior, that he died for you and me, and that because of him, we get to go to heaven to have a relationship with him forever. So when you believe that, that next step is baptism. So here's what your next step can be if this sounds like something that you're ready to do. You can tell the grown-up in your house that you want to learn more about baptism or that you want to sign up for baptism at RPC. And then you can visit rpc.me slash baptism for more information about what to do to get signed up. You can also send me an email, jordanw at rpc.me. So there's a few ways for us to help you get in touch so that you can be a part of next weekend's baptism if you are ready to take that next step. I had so much fun with you guys today, but before I leave, we have one more week next week to talk about this memory verse. It's from the book of Psalm, and here's how it goes. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, verse 14. Now say it with me, okay? Here it is on the screen. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. Awesome. Hey, let's close out in prayer today. I hope you got to spend some time at a park. It is so beautiful outside today. And I had so much fun with you guys at church online. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us the Bible, this amazing true book with so many stories to help us learn how to live our lives and practice things like patience. So God, help us this week to see opportunities for us to be patient and to act on it. We love you, God. Amen. All right, I will see you guys next week for Palm Sunday. That means Easter is almost here. Again, I hope you had an amazing spring break week, and I will see you very soon. Bye.